Thank you for calling the Toronto Reference Library. The library is currently closed. Hello, you have reached the City of Toronto Archives Research Hall. The archives is currently closed. Thank you and have a good day. Hi, I was wondering if you can tell me anything about the St. Lawrence Hall and what happened there in 1851. If you know the three-digit extension of the first New York I was wondering if you can tell me anything about the thing. In particular, it's the information regarding the largest anti-slavery convention in Canada that happened here, actually in yeah, Toronto. let me just see here. Thank you for calling the Ontario Black History Society. Um, how did you spell that? I was wondering if you could tell me anything about the St. Lawrence Hall and what happened there in 1851. Okay, sure. So, the St. Lawrence Hall um, opened in 1850. It's located at the corner of King and Jarvis Street in the historic St. Lawrence Market neighborhood. When you look at the facade on the outside, it has that beige stone. Um, it also has the addition of a cupola clock tower up at the very top. It's four stories, and of course on the third level is the Pièce de Résistance, which is the Great Hall. Just that hallway before you get into the Great Hall is lined with portraiture, which comes from the City of Toronto's fine art collection. A lot of the fine art collection is comprised of male portraiture. There are also a number of smaller photographs of notable personalities who have visited the building. And one of those photos is a photo of Frederick Douglass, who was a 19th century American abolitionist. And he very famously spoke in the St. Lawrence Hall during its really inaugural event, which was called the North American Convention of Colored Freemen. Is there any information on the anything about the Fugitive Slave Act and its impact on Black Canadians? The United States had passed a law called the Fugitive Slave Act, which allowed um, slave owners in the South to hire bounty hunters to recapture escaped enslaved people. They could just pick off anybody off of the street, including free black people. The Underground Railroad starts to push further north and goes across the border into Canada. So we have a huge increase after the 1850s of black people arriving in, in Toronto in particular. The reason for why we have the North American Convention of Colored People in 1851 is to discuss where and how formerly enslaved black people could live freely, safely, and prosper after abolition. At that time, they were framing a large question of like, how do we protect black people? with it being the year after the Fugitive Slave Act comes out. How do we continue to protect black people? Because people fled to Canada for that reason. And also, how do we progress as a community? Now we're also having a, a, a discussion that's not too dissimilar around police and abolishing police because frankly, people are tired of feeling unsafe in their societies. I was told to look into a woman named Mary Ann Shad. She was uh, the secretary for this convention. So she was a black woman, North America's first woman publisher. Um, she believed that black people need to become part of the society. She really, really believed that education would be, would facilitate that integration. And she worked um, alongside Henry Bibb and a major lecturer within the convention. Martin Delaney believed that black people should return to West Africa. You know, there was 53 delegates at that conference, plus other audience members. And So the convention was about three days, and in the end, it was decided that the best decision for black people post to 
work towards integrating in Canada. We have to be controlling the narrative a bit more and we have to be talking about how we keep a balance because to make people think that we've only ever laid down and there's, we've only been victims, you know, is a crime. And it's silencing all of those people who fought and died in, in trying to fight, you know. It's not people who were slaves, it's people who were enslaved and constantly fighting to be out of it. Young black kids, young, a noun relating to innocence or childhood is a sinful representation of our existence. Tears, 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 swallowed back into the place that knows darkness. He was a boy. Do you remember the chewing gum of your childhood? Were there goofy comics hidden in their folds? Black kids have to chew through every moment twice. It is an otherworldly privilege to ask for a desire of the stomach and be completely understood how even our mundaneness is a fright to them how we are feared for our disability and blackness, how we bear our pain like an open casket, for the salvation of white consciousness in hopes to bomb wounds unseen. I'm just trying to find some forgotten pieces of history.